and welcome back or welcome to my channel my name is Shaq and today I'm going to be doing another book haul. I don't really haul books that often but I really enjoyed the last haul that I filmed so I thought I would do another one. Now I don't have like a theme or anything with this haul but these are just some of the books that I have received in book boxes and also bought for my own money with myself and let's just go ahead and get into all the books that I have to showcase in today's haul. I actually have two books kind of in here that although I can't read, I can write in. So I'm gonna show you them here first. So I actually received and bought these two lovely journals. This first one I received in the Books That Matter February unboxing. So I will leave a link down below and in the eye bar where you can go ahead and watch my unboxing. This is a notepad that has Circe, the Greek goddess on the front with a tiger and it's this gorgeous purple material. This was designed by Myths and Tits and I'm actually obsessed with it. I'm just obsessed. Next is a journal that I actually bought for myself and it is this Busy Bee notepad which I believe is from Central 23. I'm currently using this as like my main journal um, that I write in every single morning. It has bees all over it with this really nice baby blue cover with Busy Bee printed on the front and it also came with this really cool set of stickers and I also got a bookmark from this company as well when I received this journal and I also put some stickers on there as well. Although these two aren't books that I will be able to read or anything, I'm an avid collector of notebooks. I do have quite a few and these are just some of the most recent ones that I have added to my collection. Okay, now into the actual books. <laughs> so the first book I have here, just in no particular order, the first one is Delayed Rays of a Star by Amanda Lee Co. Now I saw this in a Books That Matter unboxing. I think it was for December. So I decided to go and pick it up because it is all about film. This actually is the group book for the Filmathon round two which I announced on International Women's Day. The theme is women in film. I will link the announcement video up above and down below. I will also link below the Instagram and the Twitter for Filmathon. But I thought I'd buy this because it is the group book and I was really interested in reading it anyway because I'd seen it on books that matter. So this is essentially a historical fiction novel about three of the best people, women in film at the time. We follow Marlene, Anna and Lee. Marlene is a cross-dressing bisexual who is working in Hollywood. Lenny is the Fiora's favourite filmmaker in Germany and Anna is an Asian actress I believe who always is murdered by white characters in her films and she's kind of angry about it. The three of them are all photographed at a very famous dinner party and I believe this actually happened like these are three people that actually existed but I believe this is actually like a real tale of these three filmmakers, these three women in film and I thought it was very apt to have for the second round of the filmathon as the group book and I just wanted to get to it anyway because I love film and I feel like this book is going to be really good. I've heard nothing but good things about this and Amanda Lee Co's other works and I'm really excited to finally get to this. These next two books are actually part of a secret TBR that I am doing in March. I'm not sure if the, the video will be up already by the time I am posting this but these are the two books that I read for that. The Diva Rules by Michelle Visage which is her memoir and Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Opposing choices I know but I am sure I really enjoy both of these and decided to haul them in February so that I can read them in March. You can go and see the vlog if it's up already, if it's not you'll have to wait. These next two books I actually received in Books That Matter boxes. One was for February and one was for January and these are both Skin by E.M. Reapy and The Emperor's Babe by Bernadine Everisto. I will leave the videos where I unbox the boxes for each of the months from Books That Matter and also receive both of the books. So thank you Books That Matter for including such great books in your boxes. So Skin by E.M. Reapy is about our main character Natalie who has severe body image issues. She quits her job as a teacher and decides to go back backpacking around the world to find herself. But in the midst of this she finds out that she has a very destructive eating disorder and um, view of her body and has had for a long time and she must kind of like heal this part of her before she can love anyone else. Next we have The Emperor's Babe which is a historical fiction following Zulika who is a teenage bride who has nothing, no, like no idea, no experience about love until she catches the attention of the Emperor and I'm guessing that will end in some tears and some conflict. On the back here it says, silver tongued and merry eyed, this is a tale to make the muses themselves roar with laughter and weep for pity. I am so excited about this. I reckon it's gonna be like a retelling. If not, it's gonna have some goddesses in it. And I'm really excited to be with this book and to properly appreciate it. I heard a lot of good things about Bernadine's other works and I'm very excited to have this in my hands. Next we have another memoir and that is Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. I have heard so many good things about this. It's basically like a series of essays about Roxanne's personal like thesis and opinions and 
and life um, as a feminist, I believe. I also have on my list My Hunger or something, My Body, but also by Roxane Gay, which is also a series of essays and a memoir all about Roxane's uh, thesis and her experiences with body image and eating disorders and stuff like that. I'm very intrigued to get that one, but for now, we have bad feminists. <laughs> These next three books I treated myself to on Valentine's Day because you gotta treat yourself once in a while. The first book that I treated myself to on the day of love was Want to Watch by Kate Stamen London. I actually saw one of my very favourite streamers on Twitch raving about this book, Victoria Shaz. She loves this book or she did love this book last year and I thought I'd pick it up and give it a go. So this follows B, who is a plus size fashion vlogger. B finds a reality TV show that she is obsessed with called Mean Squeeze. To my understanding, Understanding it's kind of like The Bachelor, that kind of thing. No matter how obsessed B is with this reality TV show that she just discovered, she is kind of sick of the fact that people like her don't exist on the big screen, on TV, in reality TV shows, on especially dating reality TV shows. Although B has sworn off of men forever, main squeeze contact her because they know about the diversity problems that she has had with the show and offer her a place on main squeeze. And I'm so ready to follow B on this journey of like self like expression, flying the flag for the big girls and or just big people in general. I am so excited for this and I've heard nothing but good things about it from Victoria especially. In summary, I'm so excited for this. The second book that I treated myself on the fictional made up day of love is The Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. So we follow Gavin in the story and his marriage is, pff, it's kappa, it's in danger bruh, it's it's literally in danger, it's hanging on by a thread. His marriage is on the rocks because he figures out that his wife has been faking orgasms. I can imagine finding that out is absolutely devastating. His reaction to finding out that his wife has been faking orgasms pushes his wife to file for a divorce. Why don't you just have a conversation about it and be like, hey, this is what I like, this is what, you know, tickles my pickle. Because Gavin is absolutely desperate to understand women, he gets help from a secret romance book club of men. <laughs> this secret book club is packed with the most alpha males you can think of and he doesn't even know they exist until he goes there to ask for help in understanding why his wife left him and why she was faking these orgasms. On the back here it says, but it'll take a lot more than flowery words and grand gestures for this hapless Romeo to find his inner hero and win back the trust of his beloved wife. Just make her come, it's not that fucking hard. Well, maybe it is hard. Communicate, all right? Communicate. I am really excited about this. I think it's gonna paint men in such a different light. I think, you know, caring about women's issues is often portrayed as a female problem. And the fact that alpha males actually care and they are participating in something that is feminine, like reading romance books and having a book club, it just sounds like it could be either a recipe for disaster all really fucking good and I've heard a lot of good things about this so my expectations are kind of high but I treated this to myself on Valentine's Day because I have been eyeing it up for quite a while and I really hope it's up to my expectations because if not we could be in for some trouble. <laughs> the third and final book that I treated myself to on Valentine's Day was a much different book to the, the last two that I've held up. And this is The Fuck It Diet by Caroline Duna. Now I followed The Fuck It Diet or Caroline on uh, Instagram for quite a while. I See, I have changed the way that I've been viewing and using social media. I used to use it to connect with other people and although I still do this, I am trying to make more of an effort to cultivate like body positive, self-love, like spiritual stuff online. And that for me really started with having a break from social media, but Instagram was one of the ones I actually kind of do like. And if it's used right, Instagram can be a tool to project self-acceptance and who you are and to be surrounded by people also doing the same thing. So I decided to refine who I was following on uh, Instagram and that is when I found the fuck it diet. On the back, it actually states, this is not a diet book because diets don't work. In fact, they're really, really bad for us. So fuck it. I am really excited about this book. I'm currently in recovery for an eating disorder. I have been officially matched with a therapist and I'm so, so happy to start this journey, which has, you know, been, been a long time coming friends and I've been wanting to read and picking up a lot of books around you know diet culture and eating disorders and where they come from and how we can beat them and get over them and I thought this was a very good place to start. Um, I haven't actually read this yet and I really do intend to but yeah I'm very very excited for this. I respect Caroline Duna so much and I really enjoy her Instagram post and I can't believe I haven't picked this up yet like I, I genuinely can't believe it. We're gonna read this book and we're gonna enjoy it okay. <laughs> the next book I actually bought on a whim. I had no idea that I wanted this until I was having like a bad mental health day. I saw this in the book section in Tesco and I thought you know what I'm gonna buy it. And that is The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse by Charlie Maxey. This is a very simple book 
from the cover and also the contents, but I've heard nothing but good things about this. I think it is rooted in poetry and self-love and self-acceptance. I'm not sure if it's like a kid's book or anything, but it's definitely rooted in life lessons in a very poetic, simple way. And I'm so excited to get to this. It is the most adorable thing I have ever seen. And the artwork looks incredibly, again, simple, but incredibly effective. These next two books are both from the same author and they are both Get A Life, Chloe Brown and Take A Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. So I bought these two with the intention of reading them in February and February actually isn't up yet. So I might still have chance to read Take A Hint, Danny Brown, but I have actually read Get A Life, Chloe Brown. I actually filmed a vlog for this, which I posted very recently. So you can go ahead and watch that. I'll leave a link in the eye bar and also down below. I was thinking of also reading Danny Brown in the same vlog, but I didn't get round to it because of reasons go ahead and watch the vlog to understand but these are basically just adult romance novels and they are a really good starting point into the adult romance genre i will say get a life chloe brown was quite frisky as it follows chloe who is chronically ill and she basically has like a fuck it bucket list where she just basically wants to improve her life and take more risks because she's a kind of person who's afraid of getting hurt both physically and emotionally and so she just sticks to the same pattern in the same life take a hint danny brown is about chloe's sister danny brown i think is going to be a book per sister so that's really exciting but take a hint danny brown actually follows danny who is so career driven that she never really thought of having a relationship with anybody but then she kind of asks the universe you know for lols for bants can i have a friends of benefits and the universe delivers the universe gives her connections to ex rugby star zephyr and they are pictured together after like sleeping with each other or something and he manages to convince Danny to have like a fake thing relationship um, where they pretend to be in a relationship for the public eye. I am obsessed with that concept. Personally, I have tried Friends Benefits before and for me it just has never worked but I'm really excited to see how Talia Hibbert transforms that dynamic into one of these books and I think Friends with Benefits to Lovers is one of my favourite tropes. I'm not sure which one of these books I will prefer but I bought both of them with the intention of reading them in February and you can check back with my February wrap up to see if I can is reading them both. Next we do have a new release from an author that I have read from and have loved in the past and that is Angie Thomas and her new release of Concrete Rose. So this follows Maverick who is the father of Star from The Hate You Give. Maverick's father, so Star's grandfather, is currently in jail and Maverick's only way out of this and dealing with that and dealing with the fact that he is alone and has no money is to start selling drugs. This is all well, this is all good, he's got everything under control until he finds out that he's a father. On the back here it says, suddenly it's not so easy to deal drugs and finish school with a baby dependent on him for everything. So when he's offered the chance to go straight, he takes it. I am so excited to see like a father-daughter dynamic and even like a father-son dynamic as well with Maverick's father in jail and how he kind of copes with that. I know this is going to be very heavy in like you know drug addictions and race and all of those sorts of like heavy topics that are going to be dealt with obviously with such care and be educational like Angie Thomas has done in all of her books. I have enjoyed both The Hate You Give and On The Come Up as well. I actually met Angie Thomas, one of her signs for On The Come Up, but she was one of the sweetest human beings I've ever met. Um, and I'm so happy to continue supporting her. And I think that she's a phenomenal writer and I cannot wait to get to Concrete Rose and follow Maverick's story. Coming to the last few books now, it feels like I've been talking for a century. The next book is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is a beautiful cover. Can I just say how much I preferred this cover? to the American cover. This is fucking beautiful. This is all about Vanessa, as it alludes to on the cover, and she has this relationship with her teacher while she is in university or college or school of some kind. And it's not until like years and years and years pass that she realizes that she was groomed and she was actually in a really toxic, abusive relationship with her teacher. Some of her classmates are also coming out with allegations of what this teacher has done to them. But Vanessa starts to think, wait, no, the teacher was in love with me. He wouldn't do that to me. And it's kind of like an exploration of trauma and people being abused sexually and emotionally and how older men do prowl minors a lot of the time and I'm really excited to get to this it's gonna be very heavy and it has to be in the right headspace to read this but as soon as I am I would love to pick it up because although it's gonna be heavy it's gonna be so so worth it the penultimate book in this haul is actually one that I mentioned in my last book haul and that is such a fun age by Kylie Reed when I'm in my last book haul um this actually didn't have a delivery date it hadn't been shipped or anything delivered to me and there was no like prediction of when it would actually get here but surprise surprise it came yesterday and I had no idea 
idea it was actually gonna get here until it had turned up at my door. So I just thought I'd mention it here that I have actually received such a fun age now and I will be reading it as it is Black History Month and it's about performative activism and I want to make sure that I'm checking myself and being aware of that. And I have explained before what this is about, um, so I won't now, but I just thought I'd let you know that I have actually received it and it's all good, we're all good. And the last book on this very long book haul is Across the Green Grass Fields by Shana Maguire, which is the sixth, seventh, hello. I've read all of the Wayward Children series up until this point and I thought I'd buy this because it came out either this month or last month and I've heard polarizing opinions about it so far. I just thought I'd pick it up and try it for myself. I thought that the rest of the series was pretty average. I particularly enjoyed the first and the second book and I'm hoping that this one also has that same kind of vibe. This series is basically about magical children who discover worlds that are particularly like suited to them. So think of like Alice in Wonderland. They stumble upon these like fantastical made up worlds um, and then eventually these worlds split them back out into the real world because they're children and they can't decide where they want to stay or go back home to the real world. When they come home to the real world, they're kind of stuck and they don't know how to adjust to society again. And that's where Eleanor's School for Weird Children comes in and Eleanor West kind of takes all these children under her wing and tries to integrate them back into society. I love the series. I think it is really good. Although I think some of the books kind of lose the meaning of that and there's a lot of like plot holes and stuff that I recognize. I'm not sure if anyone else has the same opinion, but that's just personally what I have noticed. But I am still really excited about this nonetheless. It's on my 2021 TBR and I really would like to get to this and see how I feel. Well, there you have it. Those are some books that I have received lately. I don't know how many books there were in this haul. I'm also not going to try and, and, and hold them up because that is just not going to go well. That is just not going to go well. Should I try and pick them up? We'll try and pick them up. Oh no. Oh my God, this is so heavy. But I hope that you enjoyed this little book haul anyway. Give me a thumbs up if you did and consider subscribing to my channel. In the comment section below, why don't you tell me maybe one or two books that you've received lately or books that you've been loving or maybe new releases that you're still looking forward to. I hope that you enjoy any books that you pick up or any productive activity that you manage to do. And I'll see you in my next video. Uh, until then.